She believes a healthy, more energetic use starts with the food we eat and the method in which we eat them. Here to talk food combinations, uh, and no, not the combos you order through the drive-thru, <laughs> is Chris Vandervliet of Rawlicious Whitby. Thank you so much for being here. And you are our, our holistic uh, nutritionist expert. Thank you. Our holistic nutritionist expert. I've created that title and it is yours. Okay. Yours alone. Um, and obviously we're talking about food combinations today. Uh, and to me, this looks like something that I would just slap all together, but I'm learning that we should not. No. So talk to us about this very difficult process, in my opinion, of food combining. Yeah. And, and first off the top, it is a difficult process. This is not something that, you know, the average person wants to jump into. Um, a lot of people get into it again health reasons if I've got a lot of bloating a lot of gas you know get tummy aches and that then you might want to consider trying some of this um, but what I'm going to speak when I talk I have to say and interrupt that okay. I have a husband who has all of these things <laughs> don't we all and maybe I do too <laughs> but um, so what you'll find is a lot of times if you've combined the wrong foods together, you'll cause fermentation, you'll cause bloating, you'll cause So gas. what is that fermentation? Because we touched on it last yeah. segment. So what, what is that? It's basically your, your sweet fruits um, that are basically can't digest fast enough because so they sit there and then they start to ferment. That gives you the gas, the bloating, the cramping, things like that. Because those are toxins. Yeah, yeah. So what you want to do is if that happens, then you might consider some of the suggestions we're making today. Again, this is something that you, I don't think anybody can just do 100% tomorrow. Gradually introduce things okay. to your diet. Okay. Okay. All right, so explain it to us. Okay, so let's start at this end of the table. This is our melons. I love okay? melons. Yeah, well, you should only eat them by themselves. Never mix them with anything else. So, so no fruit salad? No. No. <gasps> oh. No. You want to. Well, that ruins that. <laughs> well, it's interesting because our fruits actually are divided into four areas. So that's even. It, it'll, it'll like get four little, different subcategories of fruits? Yes. So, and that's the four plates here, and we'll talk about each and of them. And that's how we're starting this? Okay, <laughs> go on. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm like, excited to learn. Okay, so melons, always eat them by themselves. Whether they're watermelons, I brought a honeydew, I brought um, a, can, a cantaloupe, but any kind of melon, uh, just eat them by themselves. And the reason is they're sweet and they digest quickly. Oh. So, again, this is a great start to a yeah. meal. Yeah. Right? And that's the other thing. You think of fruits and you say, oh, I'm going to have it at the end of the meal. I'm going to be great. I'm going to have some, you know, ice cream and fruit. As my dessert. As, yeah. No. Have your, have your fruits first. Have your dessert first. Yeah. Isn't that nice? See? It's a great idea. There is a bonus. There is a bonus. Okay. So the next group that we have is our sub-acid fruits. Okay? And this is this group here. Um, it has your apples, your mangoes, your grapes, and even your tomatoes, because tomato is a fruit. Yeah. Okay, so this is the sub-acid fruit group, okay? Okay, does that mean it doesn't have as much acid as, say, your... Your acid fruits, which oh. are these ones. Tomatoes, huh? Yeah, so tomatoes... I tomato... that would have been a very acidic fruit. Yeah, so it's a sub-acid fruit. Your ac acid fruits are your pineapples, your, obviously, lemons, limes, Citruses. grapefruits, and your pomegranate. A pomegranate? Yeah, yeah. Now, the trick is, is that your, um, your acid fruits um, and, your and these are your sweet fruits, okay? So your dried bananas, fruits? Dried, any dried fruit is a sweet fruit, regardless if it fits into another category when you dry it, because you concentrate, oh, take out the water, right. it concentrates the sugars, okay? Um, sweet fruits are your bananas, okay? That's another one. And again, the riper they get, the sweeter they get. So if you want a less sugary banana, eat it close to green. If you want something that's super sweet banana, you wait till it gets really brown. So yeah. I, I know people that like both, but regardless yeah. if it's a green banana or um, a, brown, a banana. brown, it's a sweet fruit. Okay? Very sweet. So what you do not mix is you don't mix your acid fruits with your sweet fruits. So that's another thing as well. So if you're making that fruit salad, eh, go. For, you know, you can make a stick with the same food, food combos. Exactly, and that's another thing too. And we'll talk. Have a, a melon salad alone. Exactly. And an acid uh, fruit salad alone. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. That's not hard. That's not hard. It's just knowing which ones go together. And yeah. again, it's a digestive times. Um, these guys you can you can mix together sub acid and acid because they're still the acid family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that's not too bad. Now uh, we've got an avocado here, and avocados are great because they mix really well with your sub acid and acid. So you want to make a fruit salad and put little chunks of avocado in with these fruits? Go for it. 
Um, or even or even have the avocado. See, I'd have an avocado with tomato. Yes, perfect. With salt on top. Are perfect. you against that? No. Salt? And as a matter of fact, tomatoes are another special um, kind of food because um, we'll talk about a little bit about monolithic eating. And you know, again, we are so used to in our society of eating, you know, just like you say, mashing it all together yeah, and yeah. having all these different yeah. flavors and tastes, but. Really, in the wild, when you're you're fetching the food, a lot of times it was you went to a patch of, of this and you ate it. And you yeah. went to a patch of that and you ate it, right? Yeah. So with a certain time in between, is that key too? Well, it depends on the food and, and the timing. So if it, if it if it digests quickly, then you go and eat something else. So right away. Uh, again, if it's if you're eating this, this the fruit, I would wait for the one and a half hours and then go oh, to your next one. Okay, so an hour and a half. Okay. okay, so we're eating our subacid fruits. So tomatoes, like I say, have a, a unique property. Um, when we talk about monolithic eating, you can have a plate of just tomatoes. Vine ripened tomatoes, fantastic. So people, some people have talked to me and said, "Well, I have a fatty liver," uh, or you know, they've been diagnosed from their doctors, from, and they say, "I have a fatty liver, Chris. What do I do?" Uh, my doctors told me that. I'm saying, eat a plate of tomatoes. It actually cleans the fat deposits out of your liver. Does it clean the fat deposits out of everywhere? I don't think so. No, nah. <laughs> but we could try. <laughs> okay. Why not? All right, let's move on because we have about four minutes. Okay, so we've caught, that's all of our fruit size. Love fruits. Where do, where do berries fall in? Um, sweet? Again, sweet. Sweet, thought so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now strawberries actually fall into um, actually your acid. Your acid. I would really think weird. so. You can, you can yeah. kind of taste that. So now we're going over veggies. Any, obviously, leafy green veggies, my favorites. Um, you know, we've got your collards, your kales, anything like that. We've talked about kales before, any of the leafy greens. Even though lemons and limes are in your acid fruit, yeah. uh, the nice thing about it is you want to mix that with your leafy greens because it does bring out the vitamin K and other vitamins and minerals within those veggies. So okay. I always, that one I'll combine. Um, also with avocado. Of course. Again, great thing. But like you say, you'd want to put your tomatoes in with it. I and would. No, you shouldn't. No, no. Okay. You want to just put your avocado with that. Okay. Okay. This is our carbs, our carbohydrates. So what we've got here, and this is usually your sprouted grains. Now I didn't sprout my chickpeas, but I would always, I always recommend sprouting all of your grains and seeds. This is unsprouted buckwheat. This is sprouted buckwheat. And you can see, I don't know if you can pick it up, but they have little tails. It kind of looks hairy and furry. Yeah, I can see that. So what we did there was we sprouted it and then I dehydrated it to dry it out again. And now this will last for a long, long time. Oh, yum. So the other thing I've got on the plate here is a carbohydrate is a white potato. And uh, really, you want to avoid that. Very starchy. So again, use it. Uh, I'd rather see a, a red uh, yam, a sweet potato. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. So a lot of people would look at that and go, well, it's a red potato, so it's not a white potato, so I can eat it. And it's, no, it's red no, skin. No, 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 no. <laughs> you got to look at the flesh. Yeah. Look don't, at the flesh. Don't cheat. Um, and then we've got uh, your, your nuts and seeds and your proteins. And these are really great. And meat would fall into this category Absolutely. Okay. Meat, uh, dairy, uh, oh. uh, eggs, they're all protein, right? Dairy too. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. But when I, I should have known that. And so I would look at that. Now again, proteins, um, you know, they're, they're a tricky little beast. And so, and also, as you know, I'm raw, but I would also, all, all of our audience would probably cook a lot of their things. Of so course. another rule in food combining is eat the raw food first and then eat the cooked food. Okay, so what would these combine with well? Um, well, you know, your- Our leafy greens, we know. Yeah, yeah. So your proteins and that, you want to get into like your leafy greens. So that's really good. So if you're making a salad, obviously put your nuts and seeds. Any and sprouted, yeah, your sprouted uh, grain, uh, sprouted um, mung beans, things like that. Yeah, throw those all on. That okay. would make a good combination. Okay. You really want to have your proteins at lunch though. And again, we're talking about timing, and we've sort of gone down through, you know, the timing of all of these things. You want, if you're going to have something, because your proteins take anywhere from four hours uh, for your nuts and seeds or six to, to digest, to eight hours to digest, have that at lunch. Have a non protein meal at dinner or very little protein at dinner just because it takes so long and we're going to bed and digested food in your stomach when you're sleeping is and not that's a, good a lot thing. of energy for our body exactly um, to consume just to digest exactly. so we want to make it easier Simple. on our bodies yeah because it's simpler we make it more nutrients get in, immune system gets strengthened, we're healthier people. Okay, I'm gonna get you to break it down a little easier for me so I can put it on our website so everybody who might be a little confused at home because it is very confusing yes. has a resource to look at. So stay with us. Next, we're reinventing your sliders. Yes. Meat sliders, but meatless. Yes.